definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, what's going on? Welcome on to the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com, and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Brought to you, as always, by Happy State Bank. Alongside Jeff Haxton, I'm Choice Woodman, Lucas White across the way. We join you from the First United Bank Studio, downtown LBK, this morning. You can join us with your thoughts. If you got any comments, predictions, hopes, dreams, anything, and everything, welcome on the Yates Flooring Center chat line through the 100.7 The Score mobile app and at 107thescore.com. We'll get into a plethora of topics today. Sorry, I just started thinking about uh, Three Amigos. I don't need to watch that again. Um, Texas Tech on another contender list put out yesterday. So we had the uh, had the one from Brett McMurphy. Now CBS Sports puts out a uh, dark horse list of teams that could make the college football playoff. Not sad about this one. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll talk a little... Red Raider baseball as we get closer and closer to a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series against the Jay Hockeys. Mm. Those guys. The uh, Jay Hockeys. The Jay Hockeys. <laughs> okay. I'm sure I have to pay you to call them that at least once this weekend. No, I'll call them Blue Ducks. Okay. If you, I can do that. You're not going to throw Jay Hockeys out there just, no, just once no, for me? No. Can't do it. Can't, uh, how about with a sweep? You could just call, use that in your final call when we sweep. No, them. I can't do it. No. Jay Hockeys, take that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Clint. Oh. Sorry. Clint. Clint. Uh, also, lots of uh, realignment <laughs> fodder going on out there. So that's that's always hot button topic stuff. How are you doing tomorrow? This morning. The, to morning. Whatever. Uh, Feels like a Tuesday to me. Yeah, lousy Tuesday. I'm okay. I, I hate this. You know, I I tried to to guide my Internet Explorer to where it opens up to TexasTech.com. Okay. Right? And for some reason now it's back to the MSN. That's still a website. <laughs> well, it, it opens up to MSN. Okay. I think. I believe I didn't realize MSN's still around. I think that's what this is. But uh, it's also, uh, if you open this up, it's 17 ways you're going to die, basically, today. <laughs> that's that's the way it is. So let me give okay. you the headline. So this, El Nino is coming, and it's go. more dangerous than ever. woo The polar ice caps are gone. woo Tactical nuclear weapons and Ukraine-Russia war. Here we go. China and Taiwan. Or Taiwan, as they say. <laughs> Taiwan. Taiwan. So um, I'm going to try to get this back to TexasTech.com. Because it's, That's probably a good idea. It's very um, It's probably the worst. You're probably awful. the worst person for <laughs> that to be the first thing you mm-hmm. see, too. It's like, oh, great. Yep. We're all going to die. Today, this afternoon. Just this afternoon. We're good tomorrow, though. So, you can uh, hit us up. We'd love to have your thoughts, your comments, your questions of any and all varieties. Yates Flooring Center chat line wide open to you through that uh, 100.7 The Score mobile app. We will uh, have our tiers of 12 coming up at uh, 945 this morning as we... Rank the Big 12 teams the uh, penultimate time in the regular season, at least. We'll give one final ranking uh, heading into the conference tournament, which starts, what are we looking at, Wednesday of Wednesday, next week? Wednesday, 9 a.m. And we have a decent shot at playing in that Wednesday. Yes. Like 9 a.m. game, right? I'll be honest, I hope so. I mean, I would much rather. I, I mean, 
it might be different this year because games have moved with a more brisk pace, but Touche. It yep. just knowing that an extra inning game might have you there till midnight is not a good feeling. You know and trying to get guide your pregame shows and you take the air and hour and a half before the first pitch and it's just not easy. That you know if you got that nine o'clock game, you're going on at eight thirty, you're gonna be done by lunchtime. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's the one for sure you know about <laughs> that's going to start on time. All the others, who knows? So that Wednesday 9 a.m. game, uh, I'm trying to find the – is there a bracket yet? Lucas, you're going to have to help it's me with this. It's the four seed against the five seed. So the four and five will play. Right now, Texas Tech sits at sixth place in the Big 12 Conference. So you wouldn't play in that that particular matchup if the season ended today. But our expectation is at bare minimum you're going to win two games this weekend. All right, that's the expectation. If you're not expecting that, that's pretty pretty bad. Uh, so you expect to win two games this weekend. Uh, TCU sitting in front of you, and they play against Texas. No, they play against K-State. K-State. I think you're right. West Virginia plays Texas. West Virginia plays Texas. So I don't even know if there's a way you can get into that six game without sweeping. Yeah, so we'll see. I guess you can hop TCU and you have the the tie break on them. So if TCU loses two out of three and Tech wins two out of three, we'll play in that four or five, five matchup on, on Wednesday morning. One thing that is nice about that tournament we don't have to go through any weather delays. That is the beautiful thing about playing this yeah. in the in Globe Life Field uh, because you've got the, the roof that can close up and not have to deal with any weather issues. If uh, if there's an option, like clear skies and stuff and not too hot, do you want to see the roof open there? Yeah. I'd yeah. like it. The ball jumps more. I think uh-huh. they've, they've been pretty – it's pretty obvious there that – the ball carries when the roof is open compared to when it's closed. So I wouldn't mind seeing it, it open for that tournament. But but we'll see. That's coming up uh, about a week from tomorrow. And uh, likely the Red Raiders will be playing early on there. In, uh, One of the best parts about it for us is no sitting on the ledge. No sitting on the ledge. Yeah, at the Bricktown Ballpark. Uh-huh. One of the radio crews, two actually, had to sit outside on the ledge. Really? Mm-hmm. It's just because you only have enough spots enough to house. Room, yeah. Now, this one, do they put one of you in a suite and one of you in a in the radio booth, or do they have like four different radio booths there? They have eight different. Golly. That's crazy. The newness of these things and the money that's spent yeah, I mean, on everything is... We'll have our... Designated booth, yeah, and we'll not ever have to move it or stuff. Really? So it's yeah. you got eight different spots. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. So looking forward to it. But you got really three nice. big ones coming up this weekend against the Kansas Jayhawks. I, I'm very like it's it's a lot of give and take for me because I got you know if I was up there I got to see my family. Right. I got oh, to yeah. spend a lot of family time, hang around in an area you know really well. But I don't think I would trade it. Really? No. Uh, you, you love it I that wouldn't. much. You're listening to the end of the bench. We'll bring you some headlines next on 100.7 score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 the score. Headlines for you. What you need to know part of the end of the bench on 100.7 the score and 107 the score.com. Max, we'll start it off with uh, Red Raider Golf. Had a pretty good little day yesterday. Not over yet, but uh, went 10 under to open things up at the Norman Regional. Led through the first round. Um, They are underway in the second round. OU's jumped out in front. Uh, They're 5 under par. If you don't win, if you're a top 10 team in the country and you can't win on your home course, that's pretty bad, right? (laughs) Like, oh, you should be the favorite to win this regional. Right? 
I mean, it's your home course. The where, the place these guys practice most of the time. See, uh, and they're a top ten team. It's not like they're see homeboy get an ace yesterday. I did. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I like him. He's he's got a little rotund to him. <laughs> it's like way to get that thing, man. But uh, OU fourteen under right now. They're off to a fast start today. Texas Tech sitting at nine under in second place. That one in the second of three rounds there in Norman. Texas Tech has to finish at uh, fifth place or better to advance on to the NCAA championships at Greyhawk in Arizona. We'll keep you updated on that one. Uh, We've got some news for Texas Tech basketball. Warren Washington officially signs, so that's always a good good thing. You see the commitment, then you see the signing. I like this whole... uh, the whole system of the transfer portal because there's a very little time for guys to change their mind on it. Most of the time it is, hey, I'll commit one day and within the next two days I'm I'm signing for a team and that makes it mostly permanent. So uh, good to see that. Washington was the on the all Pac-12 defensive team last year, averaged about two blocks per game, close to 10 points per game as well for uh, Arizona State. I think what's interesting about him is he's the guy that will be at his fourth school in five years. So, but that's that's becoming such a normal thing now for these guys that hit the transfer portal. I'm curious, like when we look back on this, look at like seniors, how many, I, what the averages are of transfers. I would guess you're going to have most. People out there, the average will probably be three schools in college. How about just av- average for anybody? Well, I was thinking seventy-five um, percent people have had gone at least one transfer. Oh, I think you're, sh- I think you're shooting low. Like right now, think well, about it. We'll do. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to track this. Stuff. We'll track it when we get to Big Twelve basketball season. Looking at all the Big Twelve yeah. schools, because I mean, I think it was eight of the first nine for Kansas State were transfers. Like I the they, first, I thought all thir- I thought all the guys were. Oh, okay, not just transfers. That one of them was a freshman out of that nine. Every single player for Kansas State at scholarship was new this year. For Jerome Tank. Every all thirteen scholarship players were new to that team, either transfer or freshman. So <laughs> it's pretty so wild. So you're saying seventy five percent. I think seventy five is low. I think you're getting you you're pushing ninety percent transfer at least once. Like think think about I'm, t- I'm talking about today's basketball. Not five years ago. Not when Norris Odiase played, but today's basketball. I think about the the people on Texas Tech's team right now. Just everybody that's on there. You got a freshman that's coming. You got two freshmen that are coming back for a second year, and that's a huge deal, right? Pop Isaacs and Lamar Washington. Oh, three. Robert Jennings, you've you've retained three freshmen. That's unreal. Three guys that are coming back. Everybody else is going to be a new freshman or a transfer. Or I, has transferred once, at least, already. I read... On Twitter somewhere, I can't remember, but there are only five Division One schools that did that did not have a single guy transfer out of their program. So five out of three hundred and fifty schools, and I I, I remember and Duke for, was one of them. Is that four like yeah. right now? Yes, and Florida Atlantic was another one. I can't remember the other few, but Duke FAU, wow, yeah, and it didn't have a single transfer. It's because Duke's guys just transferred to the NBA, man. That's yeah. I I do want to. We'll have to to dig up some numbers on this, and once Big Twelve season rolls around and see, because I'm I'm curious. I might be overshooting it. You may be undershooting, or one might be right. But goodness gracious, uh, the team that was not right, the Texas Rangers last night. Sheesh, twelve nothing loss to the Braves. This is by far their biggest beatdown they've received this year. As we talked about last week, the run differential has been super positive for the Rangers, so this will knock it down just a little bit. But 
Uh, they lose 12 nothing to the Braves. I think they were just sacrificing all of the uh, sports juju to the Dallas Stars last night. That must mm. have been it. Yeah. Like, we're going to take this one. Make sure you guys have got it because uh, the Stars won last night, if you missed it. They take out the Kraken 2-1. Got a little uh, anxious in the final seconds of that one, but the uh, Stars are able to hold on. Winning it 2-1. to one. And uh, they advance on to play the Vegas Golden Knights in the Western Conference Finals. That'll be coming up on Friday to open that series. Uh, going back to baseball, Astros beat the Cubs 6-4. to four. So we'll have both Rangers and Astros again for you on our stations. Rangers-Braves at 6.30 on Double T 97.3. Astros-Cubbies 6.40 on 100.7. The score. And uh, congratulations to Adrian Fry who uh, originally just received a camp invite from the New Orleans Saints, has now signed a free agent deal with the Saints. So awesome stuff there. They liked what they saw enough for him to to get a deal signed. You two can join us. The thoughts, the comments, the questions, all of it. Welcome on the Yates Flooring Center chat line through the 100.7 The Score mobile app. And they're at 107thescore.com. To see uh, one of the... Uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit uh, edition cover people. I don't know. I was going to bring this up, but I didn't want to derail you. You were going so good. um, You know who I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. This is freaking This is another. That should have been the main end times line on MSN. Uh, Martha Stewart. And that's the the number one. What are we doing, people? That was the number one. So, so they. You have uh, to wonder who the hell are making these decisions wokes. when it comes to to marketing. When it comes to, I mean, again, we saw what Bud Light did. Basically, just shot their mm-hmm. entire leg off, you know, in one fell swoop. With shot, the mo- shot something else off. It was aimed more at the crotch. There. Okay, in the crotchal region. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, I mean, who's sitting around going, you know who we should throw this on the cover? This is a great idea. I'll tell you what. We, we have got, this thing that's geared toward a certain... Was it Megan Fox, the other one? She was one of the other yeah, ones? Yeah, that one makes a little more sense. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, right? Okay, so it's... uh, So they've they've gone multiple cover girls for uh, yeah, yeah, the last yeah, few yeah, years, yeah. I guess. It needs to be so one. you can pick. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. They're all inclusive. That's why. Everybody's mm. inclusive. Well, if uh, Martha Stewart is on the front page of Sports <laughs> Illustrated in Martha, a bathing suit. Martha Stewart. 81 years old. 81. Martha Stewart. Uh, Megan Fox, Brooks Nader. And here we go. Trans singer, Kim Petras. Does that mean there's like stuff coming out of the swimsuit? Or is this, is this, is it, <laughs> let's just, it go! <laughs> there it is. There's Martha. I'm just laughing because, seriously, there has been, there's a certain uh, demographic you're supposed to go after. It don't matter anymore. You're supposed to go after a certain demographic that sells this stuff. But, hey, you know what? Maybe those uh, 80-year-olds out there that bought the swimsuit are like, hey, this is more my cup of tea now. I've I've been abstaining from the swimsuit because they're putting girls like Kate Upton on there. But now that they got Martha Stewart, I'll get my cane up. How long the days of, of Kate Upton, that's for sure. And that wasn't too long ago, but those days no. were better. Oh, my goodness. So there you go. Martha Stewart, one of your swimsuit issue, Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition cover girls. Welcome to 2023. Can you imagine telling yourself that five years ago? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like Martha Stewart's going to be on the cover at 2023. <laughs> You'd smack yourself in the face. Wow. Get your uh, thoughts, comments, questions discussed in on the Yates Flooring Center chat Disgusting line. is right. <laughs> Whatever you want. We'll uh, take a look at the calendar. Coming up next on 100.7 The Score. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Part of your Tuesday, it's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and 107 The Score. 
dot com. Alongside Jeff Haxton, I'm Choice Woodman. Lucas White taking care of us as usual today. You can keep hitting us up. The thoughts, the comments, the questions. Some interesting stuff on the chat line right now. If you want to go just take a gander, you're welcome to do so. Uh, real quick, we didn't get to this, so let's let's take a quick look at the calendar first. Happy uh, Dino Day, Max. You have a favorite dinosaur? Triceratops. It's a good pick. It's a beast. Uh, it's Love a Tree Day. I love trees. That would be um, Fardaz Amak and Jalen Tyson. <laughs> no, they hate trees. That's their rival now. I know, but if you go to Cal, you're a tree hugger. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry. So you love it. I'm getting there. Yeah. My bad. Um, National Mimosa Day. You ever had one? A mimosa? Yeah. Uh, one or two. And? Not many. Fine. Was That's champagne and orange juice? Mm-hmm. Uh, National Piercing Day. Any? Never mind. Don't want to know. I had my ears. Oh, yeah. I've told you. I've had my ears. <laughs> Backstreet Boys style. That's right. Do you have the frosted tips to go with it? No, they were on separate occasions, but I got my ears pierced in high school in my friend's bathroom. But uh, grief. yeah, that didn't go out over so well. So I can imagine. Uh, birthdays today. Happy birthday to Danny Trejo. He was in Lubbock not that long ago. 79. Danny Trejo's had a lot of good roles, but I don't think I'm ever going to unsee his head sitting on the back of yeah. that turtle yeah. in uh, Breaking Bad. That was bad. <laughs> that was bad. What was his name? The Tortuga? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that was it. Yeah, he was. That was all. That was rather interesting. Danny Trejo. I like him. He's supposedly a really good, good guy too. Uh, he was the voice <laughs> of. Ah, it was a really rarely used character in King of the Hill. Was it Danny Trejo? It was Danny Trejo. No, I'm saying was the was Danny Trejo, Danny Trejo, and King of the Hill. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Tucker, Tucker Carlson has a birthday today. He's kind of popular nowadays in the news. 54. Pierce Brosnan. That's my 007. Not really. I don't really have one. He's 70. Never had a 007. Pierce Brosnan. Uh, he's probably most in my brain for Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Janet Jackson. I have not thought of her in a while. 57. Yeah. Wow. 57. I, I've all, I've always liked Janet Jackson. And I thought of this person uh, like two segments ago. Megan Fox has a birthday. She is 37 today. Megan Fox. Janet, right. had, Janet had some bangers. Some songs that ah. were big hits that there were, were only great. a couple yeah janet jackson songs that i liked I, I dug it i liked it i liked little michael that's who i was michael jackson for me all right now time for the real serious business Two, so 12 bottom tier baylor 10 Nine. Sorry. Kansas. <laughs> Eight. You could put Iowa State ahead of Baylor if you want. <laughs> Oklahoma. Seven. The hoping and praying tier to get in. TCU. Six. Tech. Five. The in tier. K-State. Four. Texas. Three. Oklahoma State two, and your Big Twelve champion, and a tier by themselves, West Virginia. Interesting. Did NOSU just one game back of them right now? Are they? I think so. Still don't think it matters. They're just not very good. It's oh, you can't, you can't say that if they're, they're one not game very from good. The Big Twelve. They're title. ranked like twenty fifth. They're just not very good. No, I'm off. They're two games back. They're so. not very good. Okay. 
So my tier. Everybody's not very good. Except <laughs> everybody. For West Virginia. You did say this was a bad league. I, it, so. It's a bad league. Uh, KU is sitting at the bottom for me. KU, Baylor, you can, those are interchangeable, but they're the, these guys. And for three straight weeks, I've had Baylor last. You've had Kansas last. Yes. And more out of hope that there's, they suck bad enough for this weekend is what I'm hoping for because you didn't sweep Baylor. So maybe you can sweep Kansas. Uh, so there's the bottom tier. These guys suck. Uh, right now, Baylor is sitting on the outside looking in when it comes to. Like, Kansas is playing for their Big 12 tournament lives this weekend. I don't know. Who does Baylor have? Baylor's at TCU. So, you know, gross. No, I think Baylor has a non-conference. I'm looking right now. It says. Nope, I'm looking at last weekend. Thanks, Lucas. You're right. Why don't they give me the CSU updated? CSU Bakersfield. So, Baylor's done. So, it's all up to Kansas whether who's – out of the tournament versus who's in. And Kansas. Oh, I think Baylor's out. Okay, I spent way too much time on the bottom two teams that nobody cares about. So I'm switching mine, Hacks. Baylor's at the bottom because they, I think they are mathematically... They are. They're out of the Big 12 tournament. So Kansas at eight, Baylor nine. Let's go. This is the oh, one of you two teams... Might possibly make the tournament tier. TCU 7, OU 6. RPI is not great for either of those teams, but if they make a run in the last few games or in the Big 12 tournament, I, I could see either one of those teams getting in. OU more likely than TCU. This is These teams will make the tournament tier. Tech, Texas, K-State. And Big 12 title contenders though I think West Virginia separated. Oklahoma State 2, West Virginia 1. So there you go. In that West Virginia-Oklahoma State debate, West Virginia also won 2 of 3 in Stillwater. Yeah. And you're correct. Yeah, I think West Virginia is going to win the league. Do you see where West Virginia is now in the rankings? They got a big boost from beating old Tadlock's club. Were they like eight or something? Six. Six. Six national. Okay. So, West Virginia. Who would have thunk that? Are we going to still call it Big 12 Bad League? <laughs> you got a team that's in a, a national host at this point. West Virginia's kind of rolling. So, six on that front. Um, yeah, Tex at 10 and 11. You win two games against Kansas and win one. If you win three games the rest of the way out, you've solidified your big your NCAA tournament berth, in my opinion. You win three total games. Whether that's three in a row this weekend and go two and barbecue in, in Arlington, or if you win two this weekend and win one in Arlington, I think that's the number Texas Tech needs to look at. You get three games, I think you're in. Feels feel pretty confident. You go and find a way to crap the bed and lose to Kansas two games this weekend, I get really scared. Really scared. But I think Texas Tech should feel pretty good about their prospects of making the Big 12 or making the NCAA tournament. Now what happens from there? You could get slotted a, in Baton Rouge, you could get you get a terrible draw, but I feel pretty confident confident about them being in. Kansas State's the interesting case study to me. They're sitting there at twelve and nine in the league. I think they're solidly in the tournament, but their RPI is worse than Texas Tech's at this point. So definitely something to keep an eye on because that could hurt Kansas State when it comes to the selection itself. OU. Is 10 and 11 in the league, same as Texas Tech, but they're 29 and 22 overall records, which holding them back quite a bit. They've won three in a row. Lots of your thoughts rolling in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We're going to those coming up next and a little bit more realignments as well. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. 
Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Glad to be part of your Tuesday. You're listening to the End of the Bench on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Choice Woodman, Jeff Haxton, hanging you with you till nooner. Keep the thoughts, the comments, the questions. Lots rolling in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We'll get back to a little bit of realignment talk in a moment. Also, CBS Sports has Texas Tech on another hype list. I'm a little scared of all the hype (laughs) surrounding Texas Tech now. It's going from kind of dark horse type of conversation to, you know, expectations getting up there conversation. So we'll get to that in 15 minutes or so. Uh, Right now, it's time for this. It's now time for the dad joke of the day. Hex, you know, I used to have a uh, an Uncle Elroy. He used to sell pants out of the back of a, a car. For just 25 cents a piece. Everybody called him Quarter Roy. Do you get it? I don't get it. Corduroy. Corduroy. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Dang it. I was hung up on L. Elroy. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Corduroy. Corduroy. Quarter. Yeah. Hey, Ax. What? What do you call a really fat psychic? Mm, I don't know. A fortune teller. Look at Lucas. <laughs> Play something, Lucas. And boom goes the dynamite. Okay. Pass it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. And boom goes the dynamite. What do you got that's better, Lucas? I never say that these are better. First of all, but <laughs> you know, touche. I, I am terrified of elevators, so I'm gonna take the steps to avoid them. Mm. Mm. It's so dumb. Oh, it's so <laughs> dumb. It's brilliant. No, it's just, just dumb. dumb. Oh, here's this from the AIDS Flooring Center chat line. Hacks. What's the most money you've had to spend due to injuries caused by someone else? Mm. I don't know what he's talking about. I think it's up to four grand now in the story. Four? Huh. Is it accurate? I, I think so. I mean, that was okay. the deductible. Hmm. Uh, Play the portal potty for me because that's oh. what Choice did. Oh. When he decided to go. Splash it down. Madman. Still. Huh? You didn't have to step in front. You watched way too much Mark Adams defense and felt like, oh, pick just up trying ball. to help down, to... man. Just trying to help. My guy was too tired. I was trying to help down. Well, you should have just used your long arms and swat. I don't have long sw- arms. I have short the, arms. The shot instead of taking the charge. Still, I cannot believe they called a charge and pick up basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. You who, almost killed who calls me. A charge you almost up. killed me. It was a charge. Everybody was sympathetic. Uh, Mark says, Joust is a blast. I used to play that when I was a kid. It's a wonderful I, game. I can't believe I've never seen it. Like Usually you, you can go through all these games nowadays, and there's the, the remakes and all of that. I think the one I would go is uh, Big Game Hunter. Mm. Oh, I love that one in the arcade. And they've got some good versions now. That's what I'd want in the house. You know what I think will make a huge comeback at some point? is uh, Guitar Hero. Do you remember when Guitar Hero oh, took over the world? It's phenomenal. I, I, it's still a lot of fun. I'll play that with my sister or something when we go. Perry has a buddy the in the neighborhood that has all, like, the band. The band. Yeah, we used to have it all. Um, That's when they jumped the shark there. When yeah, they should have stuck with Brought the, in the, the microphones and the... Right. You know, just... The band stuff is... the, the Drums. Drums are kind of hard. Yeah. But the... The guitar stuff is just phenomenal. It's still a blast to play. 
I love playing the old games or just playing games of the past. Like we'll, we we break out the Super Nintendo in my house, and that's what we'll we'll play the old Donkey Kong game or or Mario games. They're just they're classics. Uh, choice driving through Dumas right now. Where's the delicious gas station ceviche? It was never gas station ceviche. It's gas station fireball. The winner of the Derby. I almost took a picture and sent that to you guys. I was in a gas station, saw a bucket of the fireball. I was like, our winner, the inspiration. Drunk on the thought of another victory. Do you remember how fireball? That, uh, do you remember how that started, or like why that story? What what was brought up? I mean, I didn't. I bring it up about well, it was a it, it was, was a lawsuit. Yeah, a lawsuit of gas station fireball, the company, fireball. Getting sued because it didn't have enough alcohol in it, and they didn't. Yeah, it was wine. Reveal based. that. Yeah, it was wine based to sell in a gas station. Gas station fireball. <laughs> what a horse! Uh, tell us about the seventh son from Arizona. Seventh son. I don't know what that means. Someone says would love to see footage of the charge. We should have. <laughs> they have. They have security cameras in that gym. And our and the owner is a listener, and I know he, Brandon, good dude. I should have asked him if we could pull. I mean, it It'd would be just like Michael Scott falling into the coin. Yes, pond. exactly. It would have been from up high or something. Yeah. It would have been, but it would have been great to have that video just to hold on to it because I'm sure they delete that stuff after a week or something. They don't keep those keep the footage on a cloud or anything. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe maybe he does have it like cloud based, and the, the security cameras still have it. January is not a good month for me. Do you think we could track down the the exact date of when that was? It was January. It would have been mid January. It would have been the week before the Kentucky. Game. Yeah. And and I know I only played on Tuesday and Thursdays out there, so we could we could narrow it down and figure out what day it is, but. I would guess that footage is gone. I was thinking about this on the way. I don't know why. But I was thinking about this on the way to work today. The force you had to hit me with <laughs> to knock me from one block to another block. <laughs> I'm a big dude, but you still outweigh me by 30 or 40 pounds. Oh, more so. than that. So, yeah, I had to, I had to have And I still outran going. you in the sprint. So, there you, you did, go, big boy. You did. I'll never live that down. In the forty. Oh, okay. So this guy meant the the seven footer, not the seventh son from Arizona. <laughs> he meant the seven footer. So what was he asking? Tell us about him. Uh, what it's there to tell. He's a. You're going to get a defensive guy in Warren Washington, which is not a surprise with your coach and. and is he a grad transfer? Kessler. He is a yeah. grad transfer, so he's a fourth-time transfer or third-time transfer. This will be his fourth school. I'll pull up where else he's been. Fourth school in five years for Warren Washington. Oh, man. That, that worries me. Uh, let's see. For once at Nevada. It's been a season at Nevada, so he played under Musselman at Nevada, I believe. Golly, I'm trying to dig all these up. Arizona State, Texas Tech, Nevada. Uh, I'm having trouble figuring it out. We'll pull it up for you. But almost double figure points. Well, like seven rebounds. Yeah. Uh numbers oh, last year two were blocks. Nine point two points, six point nine rebounds, uh one point six assists, and one point eight blocks per game. Big hands, big wingspan, gonna be a rim protector, which is something you just have to have in this league. And it's not just about the blocks. It's about the – you haven't had a Alter guy that shots. alters the shots at the rim in a yeah. while. You haven't, Tariq Owens is your last, right, that was a true shot blocker, rim protector type. You haven't had one since then. And think not about really. how vital that was to that team. It was huge. And you had guys that you tried to have fit that role, but Chiwa never got a chance. Uh, and Bala never got a chance. Bacho was the closest you Bacho, had to it, but just not the a block shot numbers were not up there. Yeah, not a shot blocker. So this is the first Bardos, one of these not a shot had blocker. in a while. So he's not going to be called upon for his offense that much. He'll be important there, but 
He's he's there to protect the rim for you. That's what Warren Washington's coming to town for. And rebound, indeed. Yeah, and in rebound. Defense. Stick backs. Yeah, that, that sort and of And hopefully thing. you'll have some of that electricity that Tariq brought. Sure, sure. Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. That is right. It's time for Ask the Bench Warmers. Get your questions in now. Yates Flooring Center chat line through the 100.7 Score mobile app. Tweet us at 107 The Score. Dial us up on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806 9783 If you missed it earlier, uh, we did not have a winner for our Crack the Code contest, but we are telling you the first number is nine. So make sure to go punch that in on your code. If you haven't punched your code in today, Start it with a nine in your five-digit code and uh, participate there at 107 the score on the Crack the Code contest. All right, several uh, questions in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, someone's asked this one pretty simple. What's the hype this week? I guess I missed it. Uh, hype was CBS Sports put Texas Tech as their dark horse contender for the national title out of the Big 12 or for the college football playoff. And then uh, Brett McMurphy of Action Network, formerly of ESPN, uh, had put out way too early. I think he calls them never too early bowl projections, which I like. Uh, And he put Texas Tech and Alabama playing each other in the Cotton Bowl, which would be a New Year's Six Bowl, which Tech has never played in before. Played in the Cotton Bowl, but before it was a New Year's Six Bowl. So did I just see an Indiana Jones commercial? The fifth movie's coming out? Holy moly. There's a fifth Indiana Jones. Yeah. Have you watched the fourth one? No. I never did. I think I own it, but I haven't watched it. With Shia LaBeouf in it. I think Shia is not in this one, so that's good. Benchwarmers, is the four or five seed in the Big 12 tournament the cap that Tech can reach for baseball? I think there's a way you can get to three, but it has to deal with a whole lot of sweepage. Sweepage. Horse name. Sorry. Not allowed to do and that. I haven't explored that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would be shocked if you got beyond five, really. So, yeah, K State plays TCU. If you if K State sweeps TCU, you're hopping them. West Virginia plays Texas. If West Virginia swept Texas, you can hop them. And then OSU is at OU. If OU sweat, yeah. So there is mathematically you can get to three. As high as three. If OU were to hop over, o, or if OU were to sweep OSU, you have the tie break on both OSU and TCU and OU. You have the tie breaks on all three of those teams by beating them in the series. So there's there's that. You could get as high as three in the Big 12. But I would expect four or five. Hopefully you can win those. At least two games this weekend. Benchwarmers, when are we going to learn the game time for the Oregon game? Should be soon, right? Uh, I saw Fox announce TCU Colorado game time and yeah, the on big, their network. <clears throat> big noon kickoff. And then uh, OU, or I'm sorry, Ohio State and Michigan already. Announced for Fox, which not that big. Yeah, I don't know when that would come down. I mean, it... I think you, I think there's, you're going to start seeing that in the next week or two. Huh. Texas and Bama are playing at seven. Yeah, so they're 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 trickling out right now. So I would guess we'll get that Oregon time and maybe the maybe even the Wyoming time within the next week or two. That's I'm j- I, yeah, I am jealous of you going to Wyoming. Why? Is that a place you've never been? I've never been there. Okay. And I just think it's going to look cool. Oh, I think it's going to be great. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited for that. I was When this was announced five years ago before I ever did it, or it's probably seven years ago before I ever did uh, any thought of being with the football team, I was planning on making this road trip. So had I not had a tie-in with football, I would be going on this game just to – it's not that far of a drive no. from us. It's not. I've always thought it's further from from it's Lubbock. Not, it's I think, not that far of a flight either. You're going to get there in a hurry. Yeah, from from Lubbock to Laramie, it's quicker than it is to to Phoenix or to 
I mean, some other places that we travel to. So it's it's. I think it's around twelve hours. I've had a little bit of interest in those Cowboys since the nineteen eighty eight Holiday Bowl, where Barry Sanders ran for three hundred and some odd yards. Yeah. Tech. Tech played Wyoming at some point, probably around that same time, eighties or. Don't don't forget the Tech and OSU played that year. That's right. Tokyo Bowl. Tokyo Bowl. That's right. For their conference members. So, yeah, I expect times to be trickling out for those first few games for sure. And I don't know if they've announced a time for the Thanksgiving game against Texas, but I would guess you're going to get that one soon too because they usually go ahead and lock those in. Hex, uh, what's the deal with a botched home run call at West Virginia? So this was game one, right? (sighs) I got to tell you, this is some of the, one of the more interesting things that I've ever seen. So, the, the, if you were to go truth serum on these guys, it would be <laughs> fascinating what they would say. Okay. okay, and for a couple of reasons, this is right at the start of the game. Uh huh. And as as Bazell's at bat is starting, a, a member of West Virginia's staff. I don't know if he's an administrator or SID. I don't know what he does. But he hands the third base umpire a device. And I think that device is either for the pitch clock or to let the umpires know that they can resume play because ESPN Plus is back from its commercials. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a silver-haired guy. I mean, he's got... The umpire. He's probably 60-something. He's been around the block. You can tell. And he looks confused. What did you call him on the broadcast? I heard you call him... <laughs> It wasn't an old fart, but it was along those lines. Because <laughs> I could hear the frustration in well, your voice. I, I'm, I'm frustrated. It was funny. <laughs> I'm frustrated because it's about 30 seconds after he gets the device uh-huh. that this rocket oh, yeah. is going out towards left field. Yep. Okay? And off the bat, you're always trying to judge the trajectory and the spin, the hook. Right. See it's going to hook, hook from a around. right-handed batter. And I love Lubbock because we have wins that will negate those kinds of spins. But this one, definitely a a right-to-left turner. If you look at the replay, he doesn't realize it's his call. Yeah. He's crazy. He looks completely lost. And he's like, oh, this is my ball, not the home plate umpires. So he turns around and goes... Kind of like Leslie Nielsen when he's the umpire and yeah. naked gun. And he goes, strike. Yeah. You know, he did that foul. foul and I if you ask J. Bob Thomas, he said it was not even close. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. So I, I was listening to you guys when it yeah, happened. You and when, me, when, I Jamie, when Jamie's like, that, that sure looked fair, I went back. I'm like, okay, I got to go look at this. I go watch it. The Not the replay, but the I go watch the replay, the live time on it. It doesn't look like it's close. It does not. There's a fan that runs from the left side of the foul pole, and he's running to chase the ball. He goes behind, like, to fair territory to chase the ball. And it's it, it was a horrific well, call. Well, it just shocked me at the, and, at the incompetence that was showed. And just like, again, just like the ball's already over your head. Yeah. He should defer to the home plate umpire in that situation. If he if you really don't know, but that's that's knocking down a lot of pride, right? To be able to defer like that, he should say, "I I couldn't Especially pick it up." Especially when you're a hundred <laughs> feet closer to it than he is. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was a bad call. Bazell's short a home run because of it. You still won the game, which is good, but that game. But yeah, that was a that was a horrible situation because you can't miss that. You can't when it's that clear that it was a home run and the west virginia guy when it, <laughs> the guy that's calling it on tv home run <laughs> i mean this clear <laughs> it says it loud i mean home run oh he's like and it took like five seconds wait i good i guess they're calling it foul okay <laughs> it was he was he thought it was clearly gone too um if we get two of three against ku are we confidently in the tournament or do we need to win the whole gosh darn thing in arlington if you win two or three against Kansas, you better go win a couple in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. I think you need to. I think you need at least one in Arlington if you win two of three against Kansas. You don't have to win the whole tournament in Arlington no. to win, unless you get swept by Kansas this weekend. Then all bets are off. Yeah, I mean, hey, 
you're you're a huge favorite in this deal. You're a massive favorite. But your season is on the line. Make no sure different arguments with with me on this one. Your season is on the line come Thursday. Absolutely is. Need to need because, to win a couple because at least. You you can't win a ton, but my gosh, you can lose a ton. You're as right. As far as your perception goes, the the committee would say that team's not ready. You're spot on. Yep. To play in this tournament, if if you go and drop, need to need to win. Hacks have a great rest rest of your day. You too. For Hacks and Lucas, I'm Choice. It's been the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. This has been the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.